Hi, my name is Nancy, and I am the owner of 15 Banadnock Street. It is a Colonial Revival, 1893, and I'd like to know what colors to paint it. 15 Banadnock Street was built in 1893 as a combined residence and doctor's office. The prominent gable in front is a single room. We believe it was an entertainment room. The door opened to a round porch that was held up by Greek columns below. My contractor used existing corner boards and other trim as a model for creating the restoration. In the triangular section at the top of each dormer is a sunburst. The sunburst represents my happy house theme and has nothing to do with an 1893 restoration. There are a total of six dormers on the house, three on the left side, two on the right side, and one in the back. Only one of the dormers is incomplete. Many of the original double-hung windows were no longer usable. I ordered historic reproductions from John Moriarty in Somerville. These were painted a very dark green. Following are detailed trim photos from the front left side of the second floor. The roof on the front gable extends over one foot from the face of the house. In the triangular section, both the brackets and the dentals are done on the rake. Notice that the base of the triangle is deeper at each of the two corners, and that is because the brackets and the dentals follow the line created by the corner boards. Trim details under the front gable are shown next. As you can see here, the right side of the building at the second floor level is identical to the left side. The dark spots at the top of the trim are where the brackets used to be and where they will be returned. Historically, brackets existed at the soffit at the second floor roof line at every exterior wall except for the very back of the main house, which you can see here. The left front of the house is round with three round windows and a substantial amount of decorative trim at the top. So this is the entryway, and we know that both windows that flanking the main door were originally the leaded glass as well. The right side of the building is where the doctor's office was. Three small windows afford privacy for that particular office. Here are some of the details of the trim. This is the current status of the right side of the building. You can see that it's been partially primed, hasn't been finished at top, and the outline of the original covered porch is still there. What protrudes from the back of the house is a window seat at the half landing of the main stairs going up from the first floor to the second floor. The bump out is trimmed the same as the rest of the house, except for the brackets at the base, which are very large. The house was designed to accommodate a main family, as well as hired help that was hidden from the main family. The family used the main stairway, as illustrated by the bump out. The dormer at the top and the two windows directly below it belong to the rear winding stairway. This allowed the hired help to have access to all four floors, from the basement up to the third floor where they lived. The kitchen, while part of the original design and certainly part of the foundation, is built to be away from the rest of the house, kind of tacked onto the back of the house, and accessible primarily by the hired help. This photograph shows what a tremendous difference it made to prime different sections of the house. So the top dormer is primed, the back of the house is primed, uh, the kitchen is fully primed. There's almost no finished paint anywhere on this house. In 2005, the kitchen was fully gutted and redesigned. The exterior was also rebuilt. Steve Malone, the carpenter who's doing the work right now, also did that work. 
the trim and the corner boards are his design. Uh, they're a little bit different from the rest of the house. This is an opening cut into the roof to accommodate a stairs going up to what is to be a deck on top of the kitchen. A view of the kitchen from the left side of the house. This story is brand new. It did not exist in 1893. At the rear of the left side of the main part of the house is a three-gang dormer. These photos show the detail of this dormer. These details are identical for every single dormer on the house. The aluminum siding was removed a couple years ago. There were clapboards underneath. A lot of the original trim details we could see had been removed when the aluminum siding was put on. You can see a profile of the original window top where the clapboards are missing. The prototype that Steve created, which did follow this profile exactly, I didn't care for, so he came up with a, uh, an upgraded version, but still consistent with the time period. Note that a bed molding is still missing from this window top. The missing clapboards at the back of the round roof indicate that the original roof had a slope to it. We considered installing a copper roof, but I decided I really liked the idea of a cedar shingle roof. Before we could do that, we did have to remove the original trim from that round section and replace it with new. This shows the final roof that he did build and the trim underneath, which is as yet incomplete. This is where the dining room window seats are located. There are three radius windows which need restoration. Above each is a stained glass window, also in radius form. The rightmost stained glass window is missing. In 2009, the exterior restoration work has started out on the left side of the building. We removed all of the fascia, soffit, and gutters. Uh, Steve blocked out the existing rafters so that they would be of a uniform length. Steve is in the process of uh, putting up new soffit fascia existing wooden gutters, and they are replacing all of the clapboards in front. Using some of the original brackets that I stripped and prepared for painting, Steve made a prototype of how it was going to look. While Steve is responsible for carpentry, my job is to prepare the wood for painting. This is a photo of the condition of the wood trim at the upper left side of the building. And this is how beautiful the wood looks after I fully strip it and prepare it for painting. This is a typical bracket taken down from the building and this is how they look after I have stripped and sanded them. As I stripped paint from the house I kept records on the colors I found. The corner boards appear to have been a linen white. All of the trim from the very top of the building including the dentils and the brackets appear to have been a light cream or a deep yellow as shown here. The clapboards contain very little of the original color. I believe it was a light yellow, but I don't have any proof. In summary, the window sashes will be a dark green as was shown. I believe the clapboards should be yellow, but I don't know what color yellow, if it should be a lighter yellow, more of a cream yellow or a brighter yellow, something like a, a daisy yellow. I am attempting to do a restoration of the house back to 1893, what was appropriate at that time period. I'd like to make the house very attractive and at the same time somewhat easy to maintain. So what should the rest of the trim look like on this building? The brackets, the dentils, another trim at the top, the second floor front door, the corner boards, and finally, the dormers, the side walls made of shingles, and then the fairly elaborate trim and corner boards uh, on the dormers.